Hi, and welcome to A Deeper Dive, where you, the viewers, have the opportunity to follow along with the guests on Iyanla Fix My Life and do the very same work that they are doing. Now, just as a reminder, we are now in episode two of The House of Healing, where the guests are working to dispel the myth of the angry black woman. So let's dive right in. And I want to give you some insight on what you saw, what you didn't see, because there is a lot going on in this episode. The women are fully in their process now. We've been together for three days and things are really starting to get stirred up for them and within them. You may be able to tell that some of the women are really, really comfortable and creating a sisterhood and they're doing their work while others are still struggling to find their place and their footing. The women are still dealing with some of the fallout from the breakdown between Alana and Gloria, but they're also beginning to identify what is under the anger. In our group session, we had an opportunity for them to see the condition of their heart as well as become familiar with the part of them that wants to heal and the part of them that doesn't want to heal. The episode culminates in a mixer designed to give the women in the house of healing an opportunity to come face to face with a common enemy, black men. And these particular black men do not date black women because they say black women are angry. Oh boy. Now after breakfast, we had a wonderful group session. This time it was outside because I just think sometimes you got to go in nature to have an experience of release. While you got to see some of this very important group, it was only a fraction of what went on. Because during this group, we spent a lot of time where the women were able to identify what they were carrying beneath the anger by attaching it to an experience. It's also in this session that each of the women pulled an envelope that identified a feeling they were having. And then we attached an event or an experience to it, and boy, were we able to go deep. Because what the women didn't understand, and what many people don't understand, is that very often we go right into the anger because it's easier to control. We don't want to deal with the underlying emotion. And because we can control what we do and what we say and who we speak to and don't speak to when we're angry. What we don't understand is that until we address the cause, the underlying cause, we will continue to suffer and express ourselves in inappropriate ways. Pain, sorrow, sadness, loneliness, hurt, hopelessness, defeat. According to black women, these are things that make you weak. And like I said in episode one, a black woman can be anything but weak. If you recall, Alana made a statement that if you've got to be strong, because if you're not strong, people will take advantage of you. And this contributes to the ongoing myth that black women have to be strong and are strong all the time. And in order to appear strong, very often, we cover our gentle, fragile, vulnerable side by lashing out. You saw some of that. After we did the work outside, I knew that the women needed some downtime just to kind of let the information settle because a lot came forward. I sent them to the pool. Now, as you do your work, please remember that you'll need some downtime. Don't turn this into a chore or a task. Give yourself an opportunity to feel what you feel and allow the work to unfold within you. If you can, when you're doing this work, once you're done, take a nap. Watch some television, listen to some music, or just sit outside in nature. Now, here's something you don't know about Iyama Fix My Life. Unless there is a issue that needs to be addressed or a breakdown between the guests, there's a lot that the guests do and say that I don't know anything about until I see it on film. But I have to say I was very proud of that pool scene because I see that the women were not only using their tools, but they were calling each other on their stuff. Yes, it got through. Now, we had a lot of work to do that day, and I knew that we had guests coming. So we had a second group on that day. 
and you only saw a fraction of that group. But it was in this group that I introduced the women to their heart song, which I'm going to introduce you to later in this video. What I want to give you now are some notes that came out about what you saw and what you didn't see. These are just some general takeaways that Dr. Denora, Coach Laura, and I don't want you to miss. Get your pen and your paper. Write this down. Refusing to accept responsibility for your own thoughts, feelings, and behavior leads to deflection and projecting blame onto others. It's my mama, it was my daddy, it's black women, it's white girls, it's white men. No. No matter what painful events that you may have endured as a child or the people involved, there comes a time when as an adult, you must accept full responsibility for yourself and your behavior and you must be accountable for what you do. And the way to do that is working through the past and getting clear about what you feel. We call it a feeling check and about how you're acting out. Now let's go back to what you saw in the House of Healing. One of the things that you didn't see in the groups were the tools that I gave the women. At this point in the process, the women have three major go-to tools. I want you to write this down. Number one, breath. How to do it deeply so that it calms the mind. A long, deep inhale. And a slow, complete exhale. That will calm you down. The second tool that they received was a feeling check. They had to breathe deeply and identify what they were feeling. Now, each of the women had a feeling chart, just like this one. 150 feelings. This happens to be a negative feeling list. But each woman learned how to breathe and identify what she was feeling moment by moment. And once it was identified, she could take a breath and let it go. Because a feeling at any given time is just energy. You can process it later on. Now you can have one of these feeling charts too by going to negativeemotionlist.com. Negativeemotionlist.com. And not only can you get the negative emotion list, you can get the positive emotion list. Both of these will help you increase your emotional vocabulary and your emotional library so that you can identify what you're feeling moment by moment. Another tool that the women had was the whacking room. Now the whacking room, I set it up that way so I could demonstrate the importance of moving energy through your physical body. You don't have to have a punching bag. You don't have to have gloves. What you do have to do is keep yourself safe. It doesn't matter whether you're whacking with a bat or you're doing push-ups or sit-ups or running in place or taking it out on the treadmill. The goal here is to work the energy of the feeling through your body. You can do that in any way that's comfortable for you. If you want to whack, use a pillow, wear gloves, use a plastic bat, and talk about what you are feeling. Talk about it and it'll leave your body. Now, when we began the group, each of the women did a feeling check. And from there, I taught them how to find their heart song. And I promise you, I'm gonna teach you how to do the same. I also gave each of the women a masterpiece body wash to use daily. So that as they began to release the energy from their insides, they could also clear it off their bodies. Now, while you suddenly saw me working with Crystal, what you didn't see was that all of the women were working on their heart songs and having different experiences with it. For example, Gloria was so shut down. She had a hard time finding her song. But the reason I ended up working with Crystal was because she was ready for a breakthrough. 
I could see the agitation that started in her fingers and her legs started bouncing and that was an indication to me that something was coming up for her that she didn't want to feel. And it was clear to me that it was ready to move out. So in addition to giving it sound through the heart song, I took her to the whacking room. By releasing it physically and speaking it out, her entire body calmed down. Now here's an interesting note, and it was Cristal's embarrassment and fear of losing control. Now while it was an appropriate way for her to release her anger, instead of just waiting for it to come out, she felt embarrassed. So here's a note to your file. You must train yourself to do a new thing in a new way and there's a part of you that will not like it. That is not going to feel good. That is the part of you that doesn't want to heal. Now the last thing you saw in this episode was the infamous mixer of black men, black women, and white women. Now, for me, as a coach, this was an opportunity to give the women time to confront a major issue. How they feel in the presence of men and how they feel in the presence of other women they deem as competition. Uh, it gave us a lot of stuff to work with the following day. You saw what went on at the party, but what you didn't see was a shock in my face when I saw how little clothes some of the women had on, but that's a whole nother episode. We're not going to talk about that here. Yes, there was a lot going on. Now that you know what you're looking at, now that you know what you saw and what you didn't see, let me give you your tools. First of all, let's pick the flavor of your emotion. You know how to do that. We did it last episode. So just take a nice deep breath. Close your eyes. And pick a number from 1 to 8. Go ahead. Write it down. And next to that number, you're going to pick the corresponding feeling. If you pick number 1, the feeling is sad. If you pick number 2, the feeling is afraid. If you pick number three, the feeling is abandoned. If you pick number four, the feeling is defeated. Number five, hopeless. Number six, lonely. Number seven, hurt. And number eight, lost. Now, if you go to my Facebook page, Dr. Yamla Van Zandt, you'll get the worksheet that will tell you how to work through that feeling. One of the things you can do, an easy thing you can do, is just recognize when you felt that, where you felt it, and how you act when you feel it. Okay? That's a tool for you. Another tool is breathing. Learn how to breathe. Long, deep inhale. Slow, complete exhale. Did you notice that my shoulders didn't go up to my ears? <laughs> because I'm breathing in my belly, not in my chest. Learn how to breathe. You might want to get one of my meditation CDs and follow along. If not mine, anyone will do. You can find many great meditations right on YouTube. Do it so that you learn how to breathe. Feeling check. Do a feeling check every day just to see where you are. And specifically do a feeling check if you get worked up. The whacking room, remember, doesn't have to cost you anything and you don't have to have a bat or a, a ball. Work out, walk, jump, jog in place, do some push-ups, do some sit-ups, just work the energy through your body. Finally, let's do your heart song. I've said it before and I will say it again here. I am absolutely amazed at the number of people I encounter who are totally unfamiliar with the condition of their heart. Broken hearts, wounded hearts, sad hearts, hardened hearts, undeveloped hearts. We often fail to realize that it's the condition of your heart, not your level of education, not your profession, not your income status, but the condition of your heart determines what you do, how you do it, when you do it, and why you do it. What I have learned, however, is that every heart has a song. 
And when a heart is closed or wounded or broken, it simply sings off key. So here is a simple exercise called the heart song that you can do to clear your heart and harmonize your heart song. Sit erect so that your body and all of its energy is free flowing. Don't cross your legs, your arms, just sit comfortably. And close your eyes and breathe. Remember, long, deep inhale, slow, complete exhale. Relax your belly, relax your shoulders, relax your hips, and breathe in and out until you feel relaxed. Focus all of your attention and your breath on the center of your chest, on your heart, as you breathe in and out. Keep breathing and just listen and feel. Long deep inhale, slow complete exhale. Now part your lips and your teeth slightly so that your mouth is open. As you breathe in, and out. Now bring forth a sound. Start with Do that maybe two or three times. And as you continue to breathe, focusing on your heart, the center of your chest, bring forth what you hear or what you feel. Just listen and bring it forth. And if you don't hear anything or feel anything, stay relaxed and slightly tap on the center of your chest with the flat of your fingertips. We're not pounding, we're tapping slightly, gently. And be sure to keep breathing in and out. Make sure your mouth stays open. And as you're tapping on your chest, breathing in and out, trust me, the sound will eventually come forward. Whatever it is, if you hear it in your ears or you feel it in your body, let it out. And don't let it frighten you. It's only energy trying to get out. Continue to breathe and make a sound, create a sound for at least 10 minutes. Keep breathing. Just let your heart sing, or cry, or weep, or laugh. And when you're ready, wiggle your fingers and your toes. Slightly move your head from side to side, and then open your eyes. And I encourage you to be patient with yourself. If nothing happens the first time, try again, and keep trying. Eventually, your heart will sing. Now, here are your assignments for this week. Practice your tools. Deep breathing, a minimum of three minutes, three times a day. Long, deep inhale, slow, complete exhale. Do a feeling check whenever you are triggered or once every day just to stay in touch with yourself. Practice your heart song. Set aside 10 minutes at least twice a week and get in touch with what is going on with your heart. Download your worksheet from my Facebook page, Dr. Iyanla Van Zandt. Go there, you'll find the worksheet for episode two. Download it so you'll have questions to work with. And do one nurturing thing for yourself this week. That doesn't cost you anything. Take a nap, roll in the grass, listen to some instrumental music, take a walk in the park, or just sit down and be still and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Now, don't forget to check in with your accountability partner or your group. Do your work. Keep up with the episodes. And I'll see you next week. Stay in peace and not in pieces. Mm -hmm.